Hey, it's Nick Diamond. I'm here with ABC News Amplified, and we're down in Austin, Texas to cover South by Southwest. Dan Harris couldn't make it. He had some real journalism to do, so he asked me to come down and faff about. We're going to be covering Liars, Andrew W.K., V.V. Brown, The Morning Benders, Holly Miranda, and what I think we've accomplished is a, a really good cross-section of, uh, of uh, a bunch of great music that's happening now from across the, uh, the palette of, of music today. So enjoy it. Here with V.V. Brown. Hi, Liars. Hi. How are you? Can, you? can each of you say your name into the microphone? Angus. Last name, please. Simon. No, Andrew. Andrew. Holly Miranda, here with Holly Miranda. I'm here with Chris from The Morning Benders. So this is your second time at South by Southwest? Third, actually. Third, OK. Yeah. Is it everything that you uh, hope and desire? <laughs> What's the best part? I think through all the chaos and craziness, there's uh, actually a lot of people that like music. I've heard that the only band that was ever signed at South by Southwest was Timbuk3. <laughs> so I don't think anyone, I think there are a lot of myths and you know, preconceived I notions yeah. about I'd say that's kind of a sad part about South by is seeing all these bands that think that this is the answer. It's the great swindle. Yeah, it is a swindle. Are there any bands that are playing here this week that you're excited to see? I want to see this band, The XX. Mm -hmm. Who I like. I've never seen them. I don't know anything about their show. Or... I have a show in my uh, hotel room. It's XXX. If you want to come by <laughs> later, it's in similar. your hotel room. Yeah, yeah. Just you and me. Oh no, no. just you and me. Okay. It's XX. Yeah. Sounds Think about nice. it. Yeah. Think about it. I thought uh, what's... about it. It's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you made that video for your, for your first single um, with like everyone in the like kind of the musical community in San yeah, Francisco. Yeah. Is, the, is that a real like tangible kind of friendship? Da -dum, da -dum. I mean the video, like putting that together and doing that was nice because even though all those people kind of knew each other and like are friends of friends, you still don't really have a situation where we're all together that often. So. Um, it was kind of just a, a special time because of that, so. A kumbaya sort of <laughs> effect. Hey, it's nice to meet you guys. Um, we met before that. Full disclosure, we have met, but it was, uh, it was many, many years ago in France. We played a couple festivals together and um, and also that, that little sex prompt we had. Don't you remember that? You were blocking that out. I'm sorry to bring that up, dude. OK. All right. Critics now are saying that Sister World is your LA record. You, yeah. you kind of converge there. You guys are from there, right? You moved there from Australia. Or, yeah, right? No, I, I moved there from Berlin. So how do you guys, first of all, how do you fit into the pantheon <laughs> of L.A. bands like the Eagles and Mamas and the Papas, if this is your L.A. record. Well, we're the Doors, man. That's the good thing about L.A. music is that there's not really a definable kind of sound or something like that, you know, whether it's Germs, Doors, or Mamas sure. and the Papas. I was raised in the Gospel Church. So um, I spent most Sundays playing the piano and the organ. And then I was my sister actually, just my sister Justine was really into heavy metal music, and I was always into the soulful stuff. And you, you, did you play most of the instruments on your yeah. your your new record? Yeah. yeah, I was kind of forced to play a lot of yeah. my own instruments because I made this record mainly before I had a record deal, a lot of it. And, I didn't have any money to pay session musicians. Huh. So a lot of the time it was very much kind of a very DIY process.
I grew up kind of between Detroit and Tennessee. Uh, I was born in Detroit and then moved to Tennessee. And then when I came back to Michigan, it was kind of suburban Detroit. It was pretty sterile. You live in Brooklyn now. And obviously that's a lot different than Detroit. Kind of, not where I live. Do you feel like you fit into the, um, whatever the Brooklyn landscape is? Um, at times, yeah. yeah. I mean, as far as, what, like the, the music scene, or do you mean like yeah, the, culturally? Music, <laughs> the music scene that, that's coming up, I guess. Like I was at one point, you know, like I lived in Williamsburg for several years, and um, you know, went to a lot of shows, and I lived at the Death by Audio house for a while, and you know, would listen to um, Place to Bury Strangers rehearsing while I was in the shower, and like, it's rattling off the walls, you know? But I think at this point, like when I'm home, I kind of just want to chill. I'm, I'm not like, I don't know. I'm getting older, Nick. I have a friend who says that there's no one else who, who's making oi music that is so fiercely positive. Wow, well, we've been called oi before, and that's just, I just, that's an honor, as a privilege to be considered that. I would never self-declare to be hardcore, oi, punk, heavy metal, because I have too much respect for that music as I traditionally see it, to say that we're part of it. But if someone else wants to say it, I just say thank you, because I mean, I, those are the kinds of music I, I love so much. I never thought that people would consider me to be metal or, or punk or oi or hardcore, but I just want to be in a WK. Some faces. This is my all time favorite. That's all I have right well, now. Thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate this.